What's up, guys? How you doing in Washington, D.C.? It's really weird because I get excited to be here, but this is one of the most corrupt cities in the world. Without a doubt, one of the most corrupt cities. And if you're somebody that you want to speak out against these politicians in D.C., you want to do that in Portland, it's going to take some real courage. You want to stand up and say that God is real? You have to put up with tons of people showing up with their faces covered, showing up and to attack you and every all of your brothers and sisters who show up in Portland, in Seattle, in Berkeley, San Francisco, and even down in San, San Diego. This is one of the biggest problems that we have in this country right now. We have to understand that the government cannot come in and just say, and just censor you. That's not going to work because of, thank God, for the Constitution. For whatever reason, the Second Amendment has been trampled all over, but the First Amendment still somehow being protected by this government. So what they do, they have politicians like Nancy Pelosi, city council members, they have all the mainstream media, they come in, they say that you're racist, you're, they say that you're a white supremacist. They say that I'm a white supremacist. I'm not a white supremacist. I'm brown, I'm half Japanese. And they work up all the troops, like in Portland, they have the police stand down and it's total chaos in the streets. That's what we've been putting up with in the last two years. And let me tell you exactly why I started Patriot Prayer, one of the main reasons, and some of you guys know, but one of the main reasons is that I saw people getting beat up in the streets in San Jose because they were going to watch President Trump speak. Right. At the time, he wasn't the president. And they walk out, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, it doesn't, a teenager, I remember a skinny white kid running for his life from an entire mob right in front of the police. Yep. Do you guys find that appropriate no. in the United States of America? No. No. Seriously, this is America. You're telling me you can't go see someone speak who's running for the president of the United States? Right. That is insane. And so that was the, that, <laughs> that day changed my life forever, okay? And that's when I decided, you know what? I'm going to go challenge this. I'm going to go into these crazy cities. I'm going to challenge the police. I'm going to challenge the mayors. I'm going to go out there unafraid, unapologetically, and stand up for what I believe in. So one of the things that people ask me all the time, they want to know, because Patriot Prayer took a lot of courage, everybody, you know, there's people here from Patriot Prayer who flew over, you know, you got Tiny, you got, we got, oh, dude, we got tons of people who um, who have supported us from the very beginning, and eventually along the way they said, I don't care what these people do to me, I don't care, I don't care if they beat me up, I don't care if they slander my name, and that's the thing, that's the courage that we got to bring back into this country, that's what we need, we need that courage, because our I remember the first speech that I ever gave, I was literally, it was one of the scariest moments in my life, right? But I, I kept on telling myself to just do it, Joe, just do it, just get up there, just speak, just speak. I was so afraid. That was my first step, okay? But I went up there, I gave my speech, and it changed my life forever because it, it truly showed what it is that God built me for, right? And that's what we need. We've got to begin to put courage back into this culture. That's what we're missing because we're getting so weak. There's no more fabric in this country anymore. We have to go out, stand up for what you believe in, and just put up with the consequences. You guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll tell you this, here's the secret, okay? <laughs> I'll tell you the secret. Sometimes this isn't very popular, but I just want to testify. I want to tell you guys. I want to tell you where I got my courage from. The reason why I'm willing to march into, you know, 500 people with my hands up, or the, really, the reason why I'm willing to just allow the media to slander my name and just keep doing what I do is because I believe in God. That's it. That's it. Amen. It's that simple. Because eventually I realized what God wanted me to do is He just wanted me to stand up for what I believe in. And He said, Joey, just take all the hate, take all the beatings, take everything this world can throw at you. I'll take care of the rest. I'll take care of the rest. And then that took the biggest weight off my shoulders. No longer did I have to worry about controlling everything. I didn't have to control the people around me. I didn't have to control the protesters. I didn't have to do anything. All I had to do was continue to stand up for what I believe in, continue to be positive, continue to preach love and peace, and that was it. Can I get an amen? Amen! Oh, that was a good amen. So here's the next thing I want to talk about. Okay, I'm going to finish up with this. This is really important. This is something we don't hear about enough in our movement. Okay, I want to talk about forgiveness. This is another thing people don't understand. Okay, I've been, I've had people spit in my face. I've been assaulted numerous times. And for what? 
I've been pepper sprayed probably like 10, 12 times. I don't know. It's, it's, I can't even count anymore. Okay? I literally fell asleep eating grass because a guy choked me out. Okay? And so people want to know. They're like, Joey, where, why are you not bitter? Why are you not hateful? Why are you not yelling and cussing? Okay? And I'll, I'll tell you, it's because of forgiveness. It's because of forgiveness. Listen, if you believe that Democrats are the enemy, okay? There's that tendency to believe that. You're wrong. You're wrong. They're not the enemy. The enemy is down there. Do you hear me? The hate that you hear from people, when they spew that out, that does not justify for you to hate back. Do you hear what I'm saying? We have to forgive them and we have to lead by example. When someone yells at you, when someone treats you like trash, just respond in love and kindness the exact same way that Jesus did. I'm telling you, there's no way that you can really build a revolution in this country with hate. It's not going to happen. You're not going to convince a Democrat that you're a good person if you're yelling and screaming in their face. Do you hear me? And so... That's one of the things that we have to bring back into this country. We have to forgive one another, even those close to you. Forgive one another. Let bygones be bygones. It's okay to be a Democrat, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It's okay. Let it go. It's not the end of the world. They will learn. Trust me. Okay? Here's the thing. In 2018, I'm pretty sure we're going to dominate in 2018, the way things are going. Okay? Yeah. There's something happening that's beyond comprehension because... The Republicans were forced to join this revolution because Trump Trump stood up for something, right? Trump's going to do whatever the hell he wants. He's going to stand up for what he believes and no one controls him. So that's kind of the movement for the Republican Party. So the Republican Party is actually standing for something right now. They're cutting our taxes. They're cutting our regulations. And for the most part, they're pretending like they're trying to get the government out of our way. Is that awesome? Yeah. The question is, what, what the hell are the Democrats standing for right now? The, the leadership of the Democratic Party. What are you standing for? What? Racism? What, what else? Is that about it? Racist? Racism? Racism? Anti-white? Like, I don't know anymore. I don't know. But here's the thing. You have so many moderate Democrats that are on the fence right now. Okay, do you guys feel me? You have moderate liberals that are just blue collar, they're, they're hard working people and they don't understand where the Democratic Party went. So we need to welcome them into the Republican Party with open arms, with love, bring them in just kind of like nice and soft, okay? That is why we need to forgive them. We need to forgive them. Walk away, that's right, that's right. Hey, we forgive them for the past trespasses of voting for Democrats for, you know, a decade or two decades, but come on in and let's bring them into freedom. Do you hear me? So here's the thing. Okay, I'll finish with this. Here's the thing. Okay. We need Americans like you guys, all of you here today, okay? There's a lot of people in this country, they're not living the path that God built for them. They're not fulfilling the, the true potential. I would have never, and I did it for 32 years, I would have never known the, the potential that I have unless I would have put myself out there, right? Take that leap of faith. Go do something. We have too many people that are afraid to fail for whatever reason. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because of, of the way people look at you or whatever, but let me tell you something. Every single successful person in this country, in this world, they got over their fear of failure because they had to fail thousands of times before they ever became successful. Do you hear me? We got to get beyond that fear. Move on. Take your first step and go live your dream, ladies and gentlemen. There are so many people here today that have the potential to change the world, but you're just not doing anything. You're staying at home. Go participate. Go be an activist. Go stand up for what you believe in and let the chips fall wherever they may, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for having me here today. It's so great to be here. I'll see you guys here later tonight.